in the wilderness. Go to FHU.com slash donate. FHU.com slash donate. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. The Foundation of Human Understanding is a 501c3 church. If you suffer from excruciating back pain, do not have surgery. Call Dr. Fernando Ranella, MD, and ask him about the new ozone therapy and how it can eliminate your back pain once and for all. End your suffering today. Call Dr. Fernando Ranella, the Center for Back Pain Management, 561-819-6325. That's 561-819-6325 or injectpainaway.com. Talk 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. I have a passion for the environment. That's why I mountain bike. I love being in the woods, on near vertical trails. I relish the challenge when I can appreciate the best nature has to offer. So it was only natural that I would choose a career in the elements where I can make a difference. That's why... I serve in the United States Coast Guard. We monitor commercial vessels, making sure our ports and waterways are safe and clean from oil or other hazardous material. We patrol our fisheries and protect marine wildlife and their habitats. With all we do, it's about protecting America. This is a lot like mountain biking. It's always exciting to navigate through the next challenge. Were you born ready to protect America, our environment, our resources, our people? Learn more at GoCoastGuard.com. Sponsored by the United States Coast Guard in cooperation with the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. Download the iRadio Now app for iPhone or Android phones. Free at your iPhone app store or Android app market. Take AM 1470 WWNN with you wherever you go. Bad back, heartburn, low libido, stiff joints, not sleeping well, got allergies, need to lose weight? If you want to feel better, please tune into my health talk show Sunday mornings at 10, the Dr. Bob Martin Show on Talk 1470 WNN. There are a ton of social networking websites, but one stands apart for a very special reason. This one saves lives. It's MatchingDonors.com. MatchingDonors.com links organ donors with people in need of kidney and other transplants. In the U.S., 19 people die each day waiting for an organ transplant, most of them for kidneys. If you've ever considered becoming a living organ donor, or if you have someone in need of an organ transplant, visit MatchingDonors.com. Home of the greatest gift of all, the gift of life. MatchingDonors.com. My family and I just got back from a vacation in Florida that was more awesome than anything I could imagine. Think about that for a second. This vacation was better than anything I could imagine. Me, a six-year-old, imagining stuff is like my job at this age. Yet, there I was, not only playing with dolphins, but talking to them with hand signals, like I had superpowers or something. I was hugging my favorite cartoon characters at a theme park in real life. In real life. I even found something better than ice cream. Astronaut ice cream. They eat it in space. In space. Somehow, this Florida vacation was more unbelievable than even I could imagine. How does that happen? Must be the sunshine. How do you make your vacation this epic? Find out at visitflorida.com. What you want to know. What you need to know. Talk 1470, WNN. The opinions expressed in the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show, the place to fine-tune your swing, dress for the course, club, or cruise, and get tips on the best places to play and stay at the right price. Vacation or staycation, host Dan Shube, along with his expert co-hosts and guests, will tell you where to go to play golf and vacation, that is. Now, here's Dan. Well, 
Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show. I'm your host, Dan Shub, and tonight, like we do every time, every week at this time, we're going to talk some golf, we're going to talk some travel. I've uh, returned from some interesting trips the past week or two. Uh, actually, one of them, I was kind of stuck in an airport, so I, I was supposed to be here last week. Uh, so that's a good story, but uh, we got lots of stories to tell. I'm also back from the PGA Merchandise Show so I can uh, fill you in a little bit on what you can't find out. It's only open to the trade, of course, so many of us would love to go, but not all of us can, and it's my job to see what's going on and, and pass it on to all you. Uh, plus, of course, we have some wonderful guests that will be joining us in just a few minutes. We will be chatting with Matt Adler, and he is the founder of a, um app called Go- Golf Rank, and it's, it's a very, very cool app, and in addition to that, he's also sponsoring a event in the Fort Lauderdale area, that's gonna um, it's gonna benefit the first tee of Broward County, and it sounds like a fun event. And I hopefully we'll even get to play in it, so that'll be fun. And then a little bit later on in the show, we will be talking to Robert Chorney, and he is from Nassau Golf. It's a company that does custom club fitting and assembly. They even manufacture their own grips, which uh, is kind of unusual. You don't hear that too often, especially coming off of the golf show and speaking to all the major companies and. Uh, I'm curious to just find out how the a smaller guy who makes his own clubs and, and grips and, and whatnot, uh, how they compete. And obviously there's advantages to it, and we're going to find out a little bit more about that. Um, first, uh, oh, of course, we well, I'll have some other travel news that we'll be talking a little bit later in the show, too. But um, I would wanted to start out, of course, by my, my most recent trips and uh, get in a little bit to the some of the golf stuff as well, some of the products and the, the places that I had a chance to play. Obviously, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and I get to share it with all you so you can learn to either do the things that I do that are wonderful or just not make the same mistakes, perhaps, that I've made as well so I could save you some of the heartache and misery of that. And speaking of the heartache and misery, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was out in Las Vegas, and getting out there was, uh, I mean, get me getting out there was pretty good, but unfortunately, American Airlines didn't have the same plans for my my suitcase as well as my associate who flew with me. They went somewhere else, and I'm still trying to figure out how since we checked in an hour and a half prior to the flight, which is admirable. This was down at Miami, uh, so just getting down there and through the crowds isn't so simple. And somehow they, they lost both of our suitcases, and, and uh, his showed up about 24 hours later. Mine about 48 hours later, and I, I, I've had some success with the luggage recently, uh, the past several years, and I, I wasn't thinking, so I was not smart enough to bring a change of clothes and uh, toiletries and medicine in my um, backpack that I carry onto the plane. So uh, both of us made that same mistake, so we had no clothes and no toiletries and no medication, so... Not a good idea. So there's the lesson learned that, um, you know, even when you check your stuff instead of carrying everything on so that you can, you know, lighten the load a little bit, you still need to at least take the real important stuff with you. There there were many other people that similar things happened to. They were upset. They had uh, important medicines for children and stuff, and um, it was real chaos. But I did uh, buy this outfit that I'm wearing that you can't see now, courtesy of American Airlines, because I needed something to wear, so I thank them for that. Um, But worse yet... Coming back was right when the uh, snowstorm, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Snowzilla, like they were calling it, hit the northeast and um, chaos ensued. I, I was booked on a flight at 10 o'clock at night coming back on a Thursday night from Las Vegas. And the the flight was oversold by about 30 or 40 people um, and overweight but to the point where they had to have four empty seats that they couldn't put anybody in because they had already taken too much luggage, in, including mine. So I was sitting towards the back of the plane, and it was really crowded, and they were urging everybody to sit back and not crowd the gate, which I did. And I, I was waiting for them to call my section, and I never heard it. So I went up uh, to see what was going on. And it, it was about 10 minutes before the flight was supposed to depart, and they locked the doors and gave my seat away and uh, told me it was my fault. And there were six other people that did the exact same thing. We were all sitting there at the gate for an hour and a half waiting for them to make the announcement that they didn't make. So for better or worse, we suspect that they did that as a ploy because they needed to get people off the plane, and that was the way they decided to do it, and they they blamed us and it was pretty ugly. People were really upset. Security had to be called. Uh, 
my my suitcase had a wonderful trip to to Miami, and I was stuck in Las Vegas with no flights going pretty much anywhere, according to American, for the next three or four days due to the cancellations of all the flights and rescheduling of everybody from the snowstorm. Um, they they were really not very helpful at all, nor very nice about it. Um, I mean, some of the people were nice, but their systems, you know, they blamed a lot of it on their recent merger. Um, which is never good. They, they had a lot of excuses, uh, but didn't really take any responsibility for much of anything. Uh, not good. So we booked a flight on JetBlue, but unfortunately that was leaving from Los Angeles and going to Fort Lauderdale. So we drove, rented a car from Hertz, who, by the way, this trip, um, I had to rent cars several times from Hertz, and their service was extraordinary. I've been renting cars from Dollar, and their service has not been extraordinary and Hertz, they they um they upgraded us to a Mercedes to to drive across the desert at night, um over to Los Angeles. A very comfortable car. We we repatriated it. They it you know it's a one way rental and it was a California car that needed to go. And the lovely woman who took care of us said, you know, you guys look like you're having a really bad day. I'm gonna help you out here. At very unexpected car rentals rarely go well. And uh, Hertz really stepped it up. So kudos to Hertz. So we drove through the desert. Uh, I, I feel like I say uh, on a horse with no name or something for some reason. But we um, we we get to LAX and uh, on our JetBlue flight that we had to pay for because they do not cooperate or reciprocate with American Airlines. So we had to kind of take the risk. The flight was not that expensive, even though it was last minute and almost the last seat or two available to fly anywhere. The seats were twice as comfortable, twice as spacious. The attendants were wonderful. The service was excellent. Got back to Fort Lauderdale. So JetBlue, they did a wonderful job, too. And, and I, I typically have that level of service from them. So uh, good job to JetBlue. It was not easy because even in Los Angeles, there was a lot of uh, the after effects from all the cancellations and the whole system. But then had to rent another car from, of course, Hertz one way from Fort Lauderdale down to Miami to get my car that was parked there to get my suitcase that was down there. It was total bedlam. At the airport with American Airlines, there were literally hundreds of people and tons of suitcases that were pretty much everywhere. And, and it was just um, very poorly conceived and managed and, and chaotic. And, and people were upset and people were angry and the systems were failing. And um, needless to say, I'm, I'm American. I'm, I'm not probably going to fly them anytime soon. So uh, uh, not, that was not, not the best trip. But what I did want to say about Las Vegas, there were a few other cool things going on, good and bad. Uh, again, Vegas can be a great city. I, I always rent a car, uh, drive around, <coughs> excuse me, drive around there. Total gridlock on the strip. They were filming uh, the next in the series from the Bourne uh, movies uh, with Matt Damon. And they were filming this gigantic uh, car crash scene with a SWAT truck and a whole bunch of other vehicles. So I had, uh, I could see my hotel. I was staying at the Paris. I was several hundred yards away, but couldn't get there. So I got, I, I rerouted myself to the other side of the strip behind the Paris. The entire road was closed. They had about 300 vehicles that were part of the movie set. And, um, the police had to close down that road to disperse and get all those cars out of there. Took an hour and a half to go those couple of hundred yards. Uh, advice, more piece of advice for listeners. If you're in Vegas, go do things, but be prepared that sometimes it doesn't always go as smooth as you might think. Uh, other things going on in Vegas that were interesting, all of the uh, national entertainment media was there. Um, J-Lo ha- had her grand opening. She's uh, got a residency going on now at Planet Hollywood that was attracting a lot of attention and a lot of media coverage. Um, also, another event that was in town that uh, had a lot of media coverage, but I, I guess um, a little different media coverage perhaps. That was the adult video uh, convention and awards. And uh Attracts an interesting crowd, and unlike the conventions, uh, the convention that I had to attend, uh, not as exciting, the International Builder Show. Um, but uh, in Orlando, like the golf show, typically these things are to the trade only. But actually, the adult video convention is open to the public. I I got credentialed, but did not have time to go. Unfortunately, I, I wish I could have. It would have been interesting. But there, the point is, is it still is Sin City. There still are uh, interesting things that come and go into town. And if you do a little bit of research and, and find out, you might decide to plan your trip around something like that or some other very interesting things that take place.
Of course, uh, they've got their new arena opening up in April as well and many other really cool residencies going on. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it because I actually am heading back out there again next week. So uh, Vegas is, is the kind of place that I uh, frequent often. So um, yeah, very, very, very cool. But I always like to find something different. I found some new restaurants, which I'll share with you at a, a later date. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the goings on at the golf show. Um, a little bit later in the show as well, some of the products and some of the golf courses that I had an opportunity to try out. But what we're going to do is first we're going to take our first break, and then we're going to come back with uh, our first guest, which is going to be Matt Adler. He's the founder of Golf Rank. You'll want to hear what he has to say, so stay tuned for more of the Golf and Travel Show. We'll be right back. And we are back in time for a quick message from our sponsor, Labor Finders. If your business needs industrial workers or if you're looking for work, you need to call Labor Finders. Labor Finders places for temporary or temporary to hire opportunities for skilled, semi-skilled or general labor positions such as plumbers, electricians, concrete workers, forklift operators, office clerical and much, much more. Labor Finders has almost 200 offices nationwide. Near here in Boca Raton, they have offices in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and Jupiter. If you need to have legal insured hard workers or if you want to work hard, call Labor Finders toll free at 800-864-7749. That's 800-864-7749 or just visit laborfinders.com. And uh, I didn't have a chance to talk about it yet. I'll talk a little bit about it later. But I did play several rounds of golf out in Vegas, which is more than I usually get to play in a month or two. But for those of you who do get a chance to play more often and would like to know where to play or uh, get some tips or, um, you know, perhaps help others by uh, informing them, we're going to find out about a app that is uh, helpful in that endeavor as well as an event that's going on in uh, our neighborhood here, just uh, a little bit south of here, down the Fort Lauderdale area. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you the founder of Golf Rank, a new app, and that would be Matt Adler. Matt, are you with us? Yes, Dan. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be back here in Florida, and I'm happy to have you on the show with us. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, it's, you know, when you do a little traveling, as I was saying a little bit earlier in the show, and you see the kind of weather that's going on elsewhere, it's kind of nice for us to come back to Florida this time of year where we've got the best weather in the entire country, right? Absolutely. Now, what, before we um, get into this tournament, which I'm excited about, and it's at one of my favorite courses that I haven't played in a long time, why don't we just talk a little bit more about you and um, golf rank and, and how you know, where your career took you and how you kind of settled on this, and then we could talk a little bit more about Golf Rank itself and what it does. Sure. I, um, I was fortunate enough to retire at an age where I can still play a lot of golf, which uh, I, I'm very lucky to do. And um, I've been playing for about 12 years, and uh, this past, uh, I guess, last summer, I, I, you know, played places in California, and then I went to Ireland and Bandon Dunes and you know, these great places. And, um, you know, especially Ireland. When I went to Ireland, I, I played these courses, and, you know, I did research on them. And, you know, the golf magazines, like Golf Golf Magazine and Golf Digest, they have their top 100 courses. And I looked at the ones that we were playing. And I'll give you, for instance, I, in, in Ireland, Bally Bunyan. And, you know, everybody was very excited to play Bally Bunyan. And when we got there, it was like, Okay, I mean, there's trailer parks on the right, and some of the guys really like it. I didn't think, you know, I didn't think it was all that great, 
And then we had the opportunity to play Old Head. And Old Head, I thought, was the most spectacular course I ever played. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, it's on a, on a peninsula sitting in the North Sea, and it was just breathtaking. And that's not even ranked. Or if it is ranked, it's you know, not that ranked very high. And I said to myself, I go, who makes these rankings? And why are they, you know, ranking these things? And, you know, uh, one, one expert I saw about Old Head was they moved dirt. Well, you know, as a golfer, and maybe I'm not a purist, I don't care whether they move dirt or not. I care about the experience. How was the experience? And, you know, I, I, after I got back from Ireland, I go, hey, let me go on the Internet. Let me see if I can rank some courses. You know, my ranking, so my buddies, you know, said, what are your favorite courses? And there really was nowhere to rank these courses. So what I, you know, what I came up with was, you know, just some, you know, six or seven questions and it gave a score and I was able to generate my own ranking. And, um, and that's how we developed golf rank. And, um, you know, it was really interesting, you know, where everybody kind of has their subjective reasoning. There's no right or wrong. It's just how you feel. And, um, and it's great where now, you know, we, we launched these things, and we have, you know, several hundred users, you know, in, in a short couple of months. So, like, I went to the PGA show uh, this past week, and I looked up courses in Orlando, and, you know, these are real people ranking the courses and what they feel. It's not narrative, and all it is is a number score. So, you know, we were able to identify some courses that maybe weren't on everybody's radar that we got to play that turned out to be great. Just quickly tell me where you played, because I'm wondering if we played any of the same places. I was up there playing well, we on played, Sunday, Monday, uh, and Tuesday. We played a course in Orlando called Tranquilla. I played there as well on uh, Tuesday afternoon. Right. <laughs> but we played there Monday, mm -hmm. and it was fun. It was great. And then we played this course where somebody said, hey, you should try it out, called Orange Tree. And Orange Tree is right by Universal. Nobody really heard of it. We get there. By the looks of the thing, it... It wasn't very nice, but as we got closer to the course, it, it was like in a community where most of the houses were built in 72 ranch-style houses. We weren't expecting anything. The course was amazing, probably the best greens we, you know, a lot of us have ever played. Mm -hmm. And they do a U.S. Open qualifier there. It's a real hardcore golf course, and it was it was fantastic. Well, yeah, I, and, and, and you see, I, I played at Reunion one day and played the Nicholas course, which, you know, Reunion's got a wonderful reputation, and to be honest with you, the Nicholas course, I didn't think held up to the other two courses there, the Watson and the Palmer, and I was kind of surprised, and there were things like the fact that it's been there for many years, and they have a tent, they don't have a clubhouse, it's, I mean, this is an upscale right. place, so... Uh, again, I might have said something different than what the average impression of most golfers would be thinking about a place like that. Well, the, the easiest example to me is uh, I played Torrey Pines. And, you know, it was ranked 99 by Golf Magazine or Golf Digest, one of them. And it's like you're in San Diego, California. You have fighter jets flying over. You're playing a U.S. Open course. How is that ranked 99? You know? Yeah. Um, but, but that's people's you know everybody has it's subjective and everybody has an idea so you know i just wanted to give people like when i go someplace if i go someplace in new hampshire and i can look up a course you know what is, what are ordinary people who maybe they don't have an agenda they're not advertising in the magazines or anything like that i want to know some great courses i remember we flew out to bandon dune and we flew into san francisco and we wanted to play right away and Olympic was tough to get on. We couldn't get on, um, um, you know, some of the bigger courses. Harding Park was kind of packed. So we went to Google's map, and we go, what's the closest course? It was a course called Green Hills. We get there, and it's an Alistair McKenzie course. It was phenomenal. It was so much fun. Yeah, so, you, 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 you just know. don't know, obviously, until you know. Now, now, would you, would you compare your um, app to something like the, the Yelp, as, as what Yelp is mainly no. known? No, it's different. So, Because no. I do use Yelp for restaurants. Well, Yelp, everyone has, has narratives. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, if somebody goes to Joe Stonecraft on Yelp, they're going to say, and you don't know Joe Stonecraft, oh, it's really expensive. Well, you kind of know that going in, mm -hmm. you know. And so this way, we took out the narrative. And so one of the questions we ask is playability. Well, your definition of playability is different than my definition of playability. Sure. Some people like great greens. 
Some people like wide fairways. So the questions that we ask, we try to capture kind of everybody's subjective um, opinions and then allocate a score to it. And, um, we, we, you know, like one of the questions is, you know, hated the course, but we'll never play again. We'll play multiple times doing tomorrow. And so we do public and private courses, and all it does is rate. And you can search by location, by handicap, you know, because an 18 handicap might have a different opinion than a 2 handicap. And so we try to bring in those filters that if somebody's specifically looking for a course, you know, they can make their own decision based on what other users have rated the course. Now, you do have some other features besides just this um, course rating as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, you know, you, you, you can generate your own rankings. You can, uh, and then there's global rank, which is, you know, the, the aggregate or the average of everybody that has played certain courses. So, um, you know, some courses have 27 users. Some people have two, you know, some courses only have ranked two users. And we identify that. The other thing that we have, is um, you ha- you can form your own virtual club. So if I make a, a, a club up called Bushwood, I can invite you, you can invite other people, and when you play a new course, I get a notification. And so, you know, sometimes you might not trust everybody's opinion, but you might trust your friend's opinion. And so that way we keep it kind of like a group within a group, and then you can see your individual friend's rating. Very, very cool. So before we run out of time, though, and you had mentioned Bushwick, and I, I know that there's this uh, tournament that's taking place that you're a sponsor of, and it does have a connection with Bushwick. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this Bushwood, event that's coming Bushwood. up? <laughs> Bushwood. <laughs> yes. Um, what we're doing is uh, we're, we're teaming up with Wells Fargo Advisors, and um, and uh, this is for the benefit of the first tee of Broward. It's the Monday after the Honda and before Doral. Uh, February 29th, we're doing a corporate shootout. And so uh, it's with handicap. Everybody should have a USGA certified handicap. And then it's foursomes, and um, it's going to be at Grand Oaks, which uh, is where they filmed Caddyshack. And it's it's um, we're trying to bring in a lot of golf companies. So not only are you playing in a tournament, but golf companies at no charge will be able to um, – you know, show the different clubs. I know Titleist is going to be there and some of the smaller clubs that, you know, smaller golf companies that, you know, they'll be able to show, you know, whatever they want to present to uh, to the field. And uh, and so I think we're going to have close to 24 to 30 foursomes. We're limiting the amount so we can have a quick, you know, so it won't be, it won't be a lot of waiting. And um, it's, it's all for the benefit of the first team. Well, that's certainly a great cause. Now, I, obviously, February 29th is, is leap year. I'm guessing this is a first-time event. So if you do it annually on leap day, um, just, you're not going to have this too often, right? Right. Well, you know, the, the whole idea, we didn't, you know. We I'm only joking, of course. Monday after Honda and before Doral. Mm-hmm. So we can get some of the golf companies that, that might be down here for, for uh, the, the tournaments uh, to do that. Um, we'll bring in some media in. And uh, hopefully we'll have a great day. And, um, you know, Grand Oaks does a really good job, um, you know, hosting the event. It's for a great cause. You know, we feel that, you know, we want to grow the game of golf. And, and, and there's no better way than the, the first tee and, and specifically the first tee of Broward. Well, yeah, not only do they grow the kids as golfers, but as people. And that's really Absolutely. impressive as well. So do you still have any opportunities for sponsors or players if they would like to sure. join in? So how Absolutely. would be the best they way? Sign up. They can sign up on Eventbrite. Uh, they can go to uh, golfrankapp.com. That's G-O-L-F-R-A-N-K-A-P-P.com. Uh, if they want to download the app, it's available Android and Apple. Just Golf Rank, one word. Um, or, you know, they can, uh, they can call me up. I can leave a phone number, uh, or, uh, they can just e- email golf rank and we'll get them all the information they need. Well, like I said, it's, it's a, a great cause and I know it's a beautiful golf course. I haven't played there in a long time, but, uh, I, I've had some wonderful, uh, tournament events that I, uh, had the privilege of playing in is, and even hosting one or two down there. And it's, um, 
it's a wonderful experience to, I don't find that there's a better day in, in, you know, in the week or in the month when you go out there and you have an opportunity to play golf with great people on a wonderful course. And at the same time, you're raising money for a worthy cause. So if anybody's listening one more time, the best way to find out is, uh, just, just go to, uh, golfrankapp.com. All right. Well-